right what is up back with another video here okay so this video hopefully I can get it finished I don't know how long I've been working on this probably about a month or so maybe longer but it's finally coming together so today I'm gonna try and assemble everything finish up the final touches on this and Hopefully you all will see it on the car by the end of the video. Alright, so let's get to it. Okay, just to recap what we have so far. So the lens is off, it's been painted. Now, in these crevices here, where the previous sealant rubber gasket stuff was, I went ahead and heated up with heat gun. And I took a popsicle stick and just scraped out whatever I could. So there's not a whole lot left in there. Try and get as much of that out as you can. Oh, my camera won't focus, maybe I'm too close. Yeah, get as much as that much of that out as you can. And then previously I already drilled the holes for um, the rope light bar in the front. I also built drilled holes out for the light bar right there using the plate as a template it's actually going to still sit on top of that plate as well okay the next thing we have to do is drill holes out over here and up here for the bracket that goes here that's going to support the pod that's going to go here for this one I'm not sure if I showed you guys what that's going to be but you'll see that in a minute okay so what we need to do next is take this piece here and stick it back where it's supposed to go I went ahead and repainted it I think in the last video it was it didn't look that great so I went back sanded it down gave it another coat of paint and at least one coat of clear so it's pretty shiny and pretty smooth right now it looks way better than it did before I'm gonna put like some caution stickers or some yellow caution stripes over there or something but before I do all that let's get this mocked up first so that has to line up And then as well as this tab right here that has to go inside of there and then of course you have a screw that goes in there but I'm gonna leave it out for now so what I'm gonna do is grab the support that goes in the back back there which is this piece right here so I printed one of these out for the driver's side and that's gonna go in there like that. So I have to get the position right because I don't want the piece that's going here to stick too far in or too far out or crooked or anything like that. So we gotta make sure it's right uh, before I drill the holes in there. Okay, so I got this assembled right now. I don't have all the screws in there because I don't have enough screws that are long enough to fit through all this and that one's too long and I don't want to screw it in all the way so I'm gonna mock it up with this setup up here and I went ahead and put that screw in right there this was falling so I had to secure it so you might want to put that screw in for the time being so now I'm gonna put this inside of the opening here and see where everything is So that's going to be the position roughly there. All right, so now I'm going to line this up to about where I want it secured. And then what I'm going to do is the, there are holes on that back support there. There's two of them. So what I'm going to do is take something small and sharp I use one of these drill bits here and I'm just gonna mark put my 
put the drill bit in there and kind of twist it on that spot on the housing and try and make a mark so I know where to drill my holes. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, that was a little tricky, but I got some marks marked in here. So I have one right there. I kind of took two, but I'm going to take the one that's further back right there and I eyeballed and made a little mark right there on top so I'm going to drill those holes out see how close I am if I need to make them a little bigger to make a little bit more adjustment I'll do that alright so got my holes drilled two back there one up there Okay, so you can see where it is up underneath. That's about where they are. Kind of want to eyeball that. And I went ahead, took a X-Acto knife, cut some of this flange off right here, so the screw and maybe washer can sit flat or close to being flat up against this right here. Okay, so let's try and get this in here. Let's see how close it's gonna line up. Okay, I got the screws down in the back. See them poking through. So those are in place. All right, so next we still wanna use our turn signal but it's exposed to the elements. So what I'm gonna do is seal this up right here with some silicone. And it should work on the other one that's already on the car. I did that last year and it's still fine. Like the turn signal hasn't blown out. So I think this will do the trick. I think also, not only did I go around here, but I think I also went on the back side too so like any place that I could get like all those seams. I think I also put silicone on that as well. So I'm gonna do that again and we should be good. Okay, so I'm gonna be using these rope LEDs here for the X that's going here in the high beam spot. So this is what I got here, and I ordered these off of superbrightleds.com. They actually sell a bunch, bunch of LED stuff. And this here, they have these in different colors. They have blue, which is what I have for daytime light. They have amber, I think they have red. They might also have green. And I went with them because I can't find anyone really anywhere that sells something like this. So when it lights up, the whole thing lights up. Okay, so first thing, you have to pull the uh, little silicone housing off of the LED strip. That's what I'm kind of doing right here. I'm just working it out. So I'll go ahead and take the whole thing out. The only thing I don't like about these is I think it's only a one-time use. You cut it and I'm not sure if you can use the rest of it. They have cut marks there, but there's no place to solder back on it unless you can solder on the LEDs themselves. But I tried hooking some wires up to it and only a couple of them light up at a time. So I'm not sure how that's going to work if I want to ever reuse these. If you know how to resolder this, let's see if it can focus. But that's what I got there. It's there's like no place to really like solder. So I don't know how you would do that. But if anyone knows, if anybody's done it with these, let me know. 
Okay, I'm gonna make a cut on the LED strip. And then I'm also gonna make a cut on this silicone housing here. So I went ahead and kind of marked the space on here somewhere. Right there, I kind of cut it with the with the razor blade. Probably can't see that, but I marked it there. All right, I got both of those cut right now. As you can see right here. And then for this one, I cut a slit in the middle right here. And that's to make a little bit of room for this one. I don't want to have to redesign this piece and make this section so tall just so it can clear that perfectly. I still I want them as close as possible to each other. So kind of what I did was I had and I'll show you what that looks like. So if it was like this and like that, you see that that just looks kind of nasty right there. Thumb is probably in the way. But if you cut a little slit out right there, it actually is slightly better looking. Yeah, I could raise that section up, but I've raised it up a lot already, and I don't want these two pieces too far away from each other. So as you can see there, that gives it that much more. It's far less. And they're still pretty close to each other. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to lower this side wall just a bit here. So the next print then more of this light bar will be showing. Kind of like how this one is up here. There's more of it exposed. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to redesign this piece and print another one out. And then after that, I should have my final piece ready and I'll print that one out. So the next thing to do after that is to wire these two up in parallel. So essentially what I'll do, I'm not sure if I'll actually show it, but you can look up parallel wiring diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these wires together here. If you guys can see this. So the two positive are going to get soldered together as well as the two negative. And then I'm going to have another wire. So I guess essentially three wires. One negative wire is going to be attached to these two. And one positive wire is going to be attached to these two. So then I'll have one positive, one negative. And then those are going to go to my, my power supply. So that's how I'm going to do that. I may show what it looks like put together. Got that one all soldered up. All right, I got that soldered up. I'm supposed to put the shrink wrap on there. I'm just going to label these ends right here so I know which one's positive and which one's negative. And then I'm going to wrap this up with electrical tape and get started on the next one. All right, got it all wrapped up with the tape and label. All right, been doing some mocking up here and I think I got this where it's going to be. So I can go ahead and start finally putting it together. So here's the X light that I have right here. I went ahead and assembled it. So basically it was pretty much this piece right here. So it's like that. And then in the LED, when you get the LEDs, if you get this kind, they have these little brackets in there. So that's what I did. I screwed those into there. And it came out like this. And also I had that slit that I showed you guys earlier. You see how that's right in between there. So that's what I wanted. So that's going to give me this X right here. So 
Now what I'm gonna do is try and get this mounted to the housing. It's gonna be a tight fit. I've already went through another iteration of this X housing. So this is the one I'm gonna roll with. I'm just gonna make it work. If you can find shorter screws, that would probably help. I couldn't get shorter ones. All the store had was two inch and I think one and a quarter inch. They didn't have one and three quarters, which is what I think I would have needed. So I got these to act as spacers. So use that. struggling with this for quite some time seemed like it was going to be impossible to get that nut on top of the screw in there it turns out that I was installing it I guess upside down or the screw at least so I had the screw in the other way so right now of course it's like that but before I had it like that and I was trying to feed the nut in between there as you can see it's like no space at all so I think I was doing that wrong because there's like a little groove inside that U bracket there that this head fits in and it like keeps it from spinning. So I probably installed the other one wrong. It's working for now. So if that ever goes, gets loose or anything, I have to do this. So I'm going to test fit the lens. See how everything is fitting here. And of course with this LED right here, you have to feed that through the hole back there where the existing uh, existing hole for the headlight bulb. So I'm just gonna fit this over. And throughout this whole process, I was test fitting this piece on when I was mounting this piece, as well as this piece, making sure everything is fitting, nothing's hitting this or gonna prevent it from actually seating and these grooves when I'm going to put it back together. OK. 
Okay. As you can see, I can still adjust this if I need to. Of course, I'm going to tighten it down more, but even when it's tight, I should still be able to move it. And it should still stay stationary while I'm driving as well. So, I'm going to do a test on this bulb here to see if the beam is somewhat leveled. And then I'll go from there. All right, so I got the light bar mounted to the housing. I think the next part I have to do is just put the lens on. Um, before I put the lens on, I have to seal, put some sealant back in here. So I got this off of Amazon. I think they call this butyl. And it's just like flexible plastic sealant stuff. So I'm going to just line this all around the perimeter here. And then I will come back, I'll use the heat gun, heat it up, and then I'll take the lens, stick it on, sandwich it together. So that's the next step. All right, next you wanna install the screws that hold the lens in place. This will hold right there. Hold right there. And one up there. Alright, got the screws back in. And we're just pushing this back in there. Make sure these clips right here latch back in place. And this is what it looks like. All buttoned up. I will say this one, I don't know, I guess it, it, I feel like it came out a lot cleaner than the other one. But it looks pretty good. Alright, so I think I'll end the video here. Um, I'm not sure where this is. The filming for this has been all over the place. I'm just trying to capture everything and stick it in here. But yeah. This is where I'm at right now. So the next step will be to put this in the car. I still have to do a little bit of wiring. I have to feed some wires through the car for this. I'm gonna tap into the power supply for this one that I already have for the other one for the passenger side. So when I flip the switch, both of them come on at the same time. So this one won't be too hard to wire up. I already have the relay for the light bar in the car for the other headlight so I don't need to do that so that should be quick that should be quick this might take a little bit of time because I have to feed wire through the firewall for this one right here and I already have a lot of wires crammed through there so we'll see if I can get those stuffed in there for that one plus I have another idea so I'm gonna have to feed more wires through the same hole so yeah so this is where I'm at right now, so I think I'll end the video here. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hopefully I can get this finished on the next video. And it will be completely installed. So stay tuned for that. Peace.